Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen directly confronted senior Russian officials during the G20 meeting of financial ministers today. In remarks during the meeting in Bangalore, India, Yellen addressed the Russian representative saying, quote, their continued work for the Kremlin makes them complicit in Putin's atrocities. They bear responsibility for the lives and livelihoods being taken in Ukraine. And Treasury Secretary Yellen joins us now. We want to note there is a pretty significant delay in the transmission for this conversation. But uh, Madam Secretary, if you first could go further in telling us what you said directly to the Russians, what their reaction was, and what is the price you hope they will pay? Well, I thought it was important to confront the Russians to be clear that they bear responsibility both for the immense suffering and harm that they've inflicted on Ukraine and the Ukrainian people uh, because of this unprovoked and brutal attack on a democratically elected government and people. Um, wanted to hold them accountable and in addition to point out that the war that they launched has inflicted harm throughout the global economy uh, including perhaps the, the, the worst damage uh, to very low income countries that are seeing food prices and energy prices rise. The G20 is concerned with the global economy and its plight and I think there's widespread agreement that ending this brutal war on Ukraine is the single most important policy change uh, that would benefit the global economy and its outlook. Secretary Yellen, thank you so much for being with us. I wanted to ask you what, you, what your assessment was of how Russia's economy is doing in the face of sanctions. With a one-year anniversary of this war coming up, We've seen articles talking about how badly it's been damaged. Other articles suggest that all the sanctions aren't having an impact at all. What can you tell us from your, your uh, important vantage point? Uh, are the sanctions having a significant impact on Russia? I, I believe our sanctions are having a significant impact and we continue to ramp up the sanctions as we see ways to strengthen them and to diminish evasion. And in fact, uh, the Treasury Department is announcing today or uh, has announced already this morning uh, a set of additional uh, s significant sanctions that we're placing on Russian individuals, on firms, uh, on financial institutions. Um, so a main objective of our sanctions has been to degrade Russia's ability to wage war, to deprive it of the goods uh, through sanctions and export controls it needs to supply its military. and. I think we have been quite successful in doing that. Um, over 9,000 Russian tanks have been destroyed over the last year, and the biggest tank factories are shut down because they're unable to gain access to the inputs that they need uh, to repair or rebuild tanks. Uh, we're seeing them um, really trying to look all over the world to find the equipment that they need to supply their military. They're turning to North Korea, to Iran, um, and it's become extremely difficult for them to get the advanced inputs that they need to uh, produce the missiles and the artillery that they need. In addition to depriving them of the equipment they need to wage war. We're also um, working through our sanctions and in particular through a cap that we have placed on the price that they are allowed to receive for selling crude oil and refined products like diesel into world markets. We're depriving them of the revenue that they need to wage war. Uh, instead of budget surpluses, which they had and plan to continue having, um, they're now faced with significant deficits. 
their crude oil that they're selling globally um, now sells at a very substantial discount because of these price caps uh, to global ben oil benchmarks. So their revenues are down almost 50 percent from their highs after the um, war began. Mm -hmm. And they're running budget deficits and running down their uh, buffers of assets that they saved um, for a rainy day. Uh, they're using up those yes. assets. So, I th and we continue to put in place additional sanctions and working. Uh, an important aspect of this is we've worked very collaboratively with a coalition yeah. of allies, the G7 the European Union, uh, Australia, other countries. So um, it's, it's, it's difficult for Russia to um, evade these sanctions, and we're cracking down um, on evasion when we see it. Secretary Yellen, appreciate you joining us this morning. I'm curious about China. We've watched as Chinese diplomats have toured first Europe this week and then ending up in Moscow, sort of trying to have it both ways to reassure the Europeans we're still with you, we need you economically, you need us economically, but sending all the signs to Vladimir Putin that they stand with him in this war as well, though uh, we've not seen evidence yet, maybe you have, of material support provided by the Chinese for Russia's war effort in Ukraine. What is your message to to the Chinese about their participation in this war, about their support for Russia and what it could mean for them and their economy? Well, we've been very clear from the outset um, with China and with other countries that providing material support to Russia to in evasion of these sanctions would provoke very serious consequences. And not only have we been clear with the Chinese government, we've also made it clear to Chinese firms and to Chinese banks that we would not tolerate um, trade deals that help Russia to evade sanctions and that we will crack down and enforce our sanctions and um, the consequences will be very severe. Secretary Yellen, what, what can we do? What can the, the allied uh, governments do to help the Ukrainians uh, right now over the next year? Do we begin? Uh, is it too early to even talk about reconstruction projects, in, in, at least the western half of the country? Uh, wh wh what's our best move now? Well, let me make clear, the United States um, and the allies, uh, our support for Ukraine will be lasting and is unconditional. We stand with Ukraine and want to support Ukraine. Of course, there's the immediate need for military equipment, um, and we've responded positively to uh, many of the requests that Ukraine has made for advanced military equipment that should give them an edge. Um, in addition to that, they need ongoing economic support. The war has been devastating for their economy. Um, their economy contracted by almost a third last year, and they've diverted spending um, away from social programs and support to increase defense spending and they have a serious budget deficit. And the United States has been um, providing economic support to Ukraine. Um, we've already provided $13 billion in support, and there's an additional $10 billion that we expect to provide over the next nine months. Uh, in addition, uh, the allies, the European Union, has provided substantial support the G7 countries. So we stand uh, behind Ukraine uh, economically. And we've formed a um, partnership, a, um, in, an organization where we'll be able to mm -hmm. coordinate individual countries that want to participate in reconstruction, um, international financial uh, institutions, other donors. At the moment, we're more focused on providing 
the reconstruction they need to get their economy um, back operating closer to um, its full potential. For example, helping them to rebuild their electrical system, which Russia mm -hmm. has systematically attempted to destroy. Mm -hmm. So that's the short-term focus. Oh. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. We really appreciate it.